Thousands of miles away, on the other side of the world, live these Chinese boys. Once, long ago, their home was a vast distance away from our own. But that isn't true anymore. Now these boys, their fathers, mothers, sisters, cousins, are paving the way for a great air highway between their home in China and our own front door. Yes, a real highway, an airfield, packed out of the same kind of ancient stones, mud, and water with which their ancestors once built a land barrier so that they could live in isolation. That barrier was the Great Wall of China, stretching for hundreds of miles. When this was built, men could live alone completely cut off from each other by barriers created by man and nature. Many natural barriers divided the world. Broad oceans, high mountains, endless deserts, forests and rivers, dense jungles where trees and undergrowth halted the traveler. Man's means of transportation provided by his own everyone walked except children a road then man got the idea of riding discovered that the wild was roaming the plain using could cross desert barriers to treasure could be used to carry burdens then a discovery that, though seemingly simple, is one of the greatest in history, the wheel. Civilization to roll forward. People moved out all around them. Many of them carried goods to trade with other people they met on the way. The great barrier of wheel still remained. Man began to overcome it. From logs, he the first crude boats. Then he learned to put up sail, powered by the and his ships moved to the Mediterranean and Africa. In 1492, Columbus disputed the belief that the world was flat. Searching for a short trade route to the east, he discovered a new world to the west. Then Magellan set forth to prove the world was round by sailing around it. He accomplished this then gigantic feat in three years. The Atlantic and Pacific Oceans were no longer terror-filled barriers. The world had grown smaller. This new expanse still seemed immense. On land, the chief means of transportation for centuries after remained the wheel and the horse. In America, covered wagons blazed the trail to the west. Railroads were made possible by Watt's discovery of steam power. Early trains chugged along at 15 miles an hour. Many people were shocked said that man was never intended to travel so fast. But as improvements were made, trains went faster and farther. By 1869, a steel ribbon of railroad track had tunneled through mountain barriers, had spanned rivers, and had united America from coast to coast. And steam was also used to drive big boats. No longer dependent upon the whims of the winds, Boats could move under their own power to wherever the world's rivers and oceans would carry them. Communication was made swift by the telegraph's key, tapping words across a continent. Morse's telegraph was followed by the telephone invented by Alexander Graham Bell. Now a voice could be carried as far as wires could be strung. With these new forms of transportation and communication, the Earth's vast distances were losing their power to keep people apart. Our world was indeed becoming smaller. By 1899, Nellie Bly, a woman newspaper reporter, was able to travel around the world in 72 days. She used a combination of the fastest sea and land travel. The gasoline engine completely changed land transportation. People greeted the horseless carriage with cries of, get a horse, but the automobile was here to stay. The very appearance of our city streets began to change, as this scene taken by a pioneer cameraman shows.
And the lightweight, powerful gasoline engine helped bring about an even more amazing development in transportation, the airplane. This original newsreel film shows how, in 1903, the Wright brothers took to the air. The world soon followed. Communications took giant strides. With the perfection of wireless telephone, voices could be sent vast distances without wires. The peoples of the world were coming ever closer together. At a faster and faster pace, modern inventions were helping man to extend his control over space and time. In 1924, a flight of U.S. Army planes soared around the world in 14 and a half days flying time. Remember Magellan? He took three years. Today, with the achievements of modern science, television opens a new window to us all, reaching every ear and eye with the speed of light, bringing all parts of the Earth as close as our living room. Now, we no longer speak of modern transportation. We speak of the air age an age which is seeing the development of small, light, inexpensive airplanes to share the skies with airliners and transports. Thanks to our planes, a few cents postage will fly a letter from France to New Orleans. Today, all over our shrinking world, man looks to the skies. The development of new power in the air has brought about terrific speed. This army jet plane can cross America in the same time it took primitive man to journey a few miles. The three years required by Magellan to circle the globe was reduced to 14 and a half days by army planes in 1924. But now, regularly scheduled flights can operate on a timetable of less than a week. Man has so increased his control over distance that it takes just a few days for an around-the-world trip by air. This means that all the people of the world are neighbors with new relationships, new benefits, and new responsibilities. It means that modern communications may be used to establish a friendly world community. At our fingertips lies the culture of the world. This program, leaving a station in New York, can be flashed to Moscow, London, Paris, Rome. In an age when we can go to any spot on Earth within a matter of hours, modern transportation may be used to carry understanding and friendship to all nations. Behind the wheel of an automobile, we can swiftly reach any part of the nation. We have broadened our horizons, and the end is not yet in sight. New designs, like these cars of the future, are waiting to bring distant places more easily within our reach. On an earth linked together by wide highways, no one of us can live apart. Through the sciences of transportation and communication, we are able to exchange not only our ideas and achievements, but the material treasures of the world as well. International trade makes it possible for the varied products of every land to be enjoyed by all. The contents of your pantry or the materials in your home may come from scores of distant nations. It is within the power of all of us to bring about a better way of life for people of all races and nationalities. Our goal must be mutual trust, mutual understanding, mutual respect, so that our most distant friends will know how to live with us and we with them in one family of nations on this shrinking world.